Is she over? Okay? <laughs> <laughs> she finished way too soon. <laughs> okay. She could have rambled on for 20 minutes. We're ready. All right. <laughs> so it's 6 o'clock, so we'll call our meeting to order. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. We're going to please rise and drive. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with the liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you very much. I presume the roll has been taken? Yes. Okay, we have a couple of changes to our agenda, I believe. We have an addition under item B, communications. We have a letter, received a letter from Doug McLaughlin. I think everybody can copy of that. We'd like to add it to our agenda. And then, do you need to make an agenda? Handle that. We'll just handle that. Handle that. Handle that. So I guess there's only one at this point. So we did entertain a motion to amend our agenda as presented. So we have motions for Is there any comments or questions? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Opposed, same sign. We have a new agenda. Okay, we'll entertain a motion on uh, approval of the December 27th, 2018 minutes in our regular meeting. <coughs> Motion support. Does anybody have any comments or questions from that meeting? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. That is carried. Okay, communications. The new item. We have entertain a motion to receive, I believe it is. And just for the anybody that doesn't have a copy of this or if you're viewing from home, it's a letter from Deb McLaughlin um, expressing her. Opposition to a conditional rezoning at 601 Woodworth and 119 Hastings. So I don't think I need to read the whole letter into the minutes, but. Support. Okay, we have motion to support. Any comments or questions? Sure. Question. Yes, sir. Uh, this is for Tony here first. Did you have a letter? Yeah, I have a letter. The first point she has. Is that an accurate statement? Yeah, it is an accurate statement. And that's the second item I was talking about. We're going to address that when we get to it later okay. in the agenda. <coughs> okay. That, that motion is going to be from the <coughs> proposal. Okay. So, okay. Any additional questions or comments? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. The motion is carried. Hearings. We have a public hearing to consider the establishment of an obsolete property rehabilitation district for the parcel of 313 North State Street. So, public oh. hearing open. Um, uh, this is the OPRA, and for our new members, an OPRA is an obsolete property rehabilitation act. Um, we have used these on our redevelopments for the downtown apartments. Um, we've used a couple other ones for the actual full buildings, that sort of thing. But this one we've used for the apartments, and it's worked out um, well for us and well for the, um, the, the property developer. Um, the um, property in question is at 313 North State Street, which is the Adfels building next to the commercial bank on State Street. Um, the developer is proposing six units with two bedrooms. Um, two and three units with one bedroom, and in those there's a mixture of uh, flats and loft-style apartments. Um, on the ground floor, we have um, the commercial space will be redone, um, looking at about 10,000 square feet, if I'm not mistaken, right? About 10,000 square feet. And um, in the back annex building, we're walking through the process of the conditional rezoning for a um, ground floor apartment in the back annex building also. Um, the um, special use permit, we worked through that uh, last night actually for these apartments. Um, the special <coughs> use permit was approved for all the second story um, units. They all meet our um, requirements and things, so we're moving forward. That's done. Um, this is the second step, where it's, um, basically you establish this district. And how <coughs> we handle it here, uh, there's two ways you can do it, and we do it by each structure. So every time someone comes to us and petitions us to do one of these, it's just a structure. You could and, and, um, just take a whole block of downtown and make it an upper district. But it's, 
instead you dump this way, that way it comes before you and the public every time one does come up. Um, so at this point, um, uh, we're setting the district, and which will allow the developer, when they're ready, to move more forward with the project, um, submitting drawings, getting those reviewed, um, setting up things for the, the contractors in case they need to get some demo done, be it um, asbestos removal or whatever types of things that need to be done, they can go ahead and do that. Uh, underneath the OBRA, as with most um, tax abatement uh, um, programs, typically, that's typically, they want you to have these districts set before you start doing your work. So now we set the district to, tonight that uh, whenever the developer's ready to go, they will have that opportunity to um, come back to us, which they will have to, um, with an application for the project itself um, that we would review, um, the final plans, and then obviously approve whatever year abatement and we look to 12 years that we've done in the past. And then that recommendation goes on the State Tax Commission, and the State Tax Commission will make the final ruling on approval and approval of the final over. This night we're just uh, setting the district at 113. Um, I'm sorry, 313. Jeez, why at 113? 313 more state. Okay. Not hearing. Anybody have any comments or questions? Does the district remain, if they decide to bail on that, the, the, you know, change of mind that they don't want to do it. We still have the district, if somebody else wanted to come in, the district still exists and somebody else could put in plans and do the same thing that they're going to do. Yeah, okay. functions like the IFTs for the industrial, mm -hmm. um, like Shiloh, they put in, um, we just did that building over there for their new expansion. Um, their district was put in back in, the, what was it, Sheila, 70, 79. Mm -hmm. So they, they stay, they stay put once you put them together. <coughs> Anybody else? Okay, hey, you entertain a motion to close the hearing? Well, you need public here. Oh, public comment, I'm sorry. <laughs> Get ahead of myself. <coughs> Would anybody from the public like to make a comment or have a question for the developer is here today? And so, uh, questions for the developer or for the city are appropriate? Okay, hearing none, now we'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Motion support. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Hearing is closed. Now we can move on to item A below that, which is the adopt the, the, the amendment to adopt the resolution authorizing the establishment of, a, establishment of an obsolete property rehabilitation district for the parcel at 313 North State. Motion support. Motion support. Any more questions or comments? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion is carried. Okay, congratulations. Thank you, Ryan. We do appreciate your investment. Thank you. Okay, moving on down. Uh, request for purchase. First up, we have a request for purchase amount of $4,144.15 to Crouch Communications for a portable radio charger and trunking setup in the new Fire Squad 1 fire vehicle. And the notation down below it, it indicates that the Luniac Foundation has once again stepped forward issued a grant of $2,000 to offset per, per the cost of the radio purchase and set up. So our thanks certainly to the Lunate Foundation one more time. Well, we have a motion, support. Any additional comments or questions? The other 2100 would be out of the fire board. Correct. Correct. Okay. Anybody else? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Opposed, same <coughs> sign. Motion is carried. Item two, we have a request for purchase in the amount of $1,800 to the Michigan Association of Chiefs of Police for the Michigan Law Enforcement Accreditation Program application <coughs> for the Alma Police Department. So your pleasure. <coughs> Still approval. We have a motion to support. Comments or questions? Anybody want to give us a heads up what, what this entails? Where are we getting for $1,800? Sure. Mark, you want to Absolutely. This allows us to better deliver. That's the point. Are you working undercover tonight? <laughs> I'm working undercover of a blue shirt. I like that better. It, it, it allows us to better deliver our uh, public uh, safety services to the community. 
And what we'll do is send in our policy and procedure, although our policies and procedures are currently as strong. Uh, the previous <laughs> lieutenant school uh, created those, so. Thank you for that. <laughs> they're going to be changing them now, but thank you. <laughs> they're very strong, but we'll do is send them in for accreditation, and they'll review them, send them back, and the recommendations, so that way they're more accredited through the state, um, so that way we're, they're more applicable to our services to the community, and more consistent maybe with, with uh, what the regulations are currently and up to date. So every year after this, there will be a $700 fee to stay accredited, and that will allow us to get updates and things like that. So it's very valuable to us. Thank you. Anybody have questions for Mark on the program? Okay, we have a motion to report, correct? So hearing no questions, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed, same sign. We have a purchase. Moving down to resolutions. First up, we have consideration of, of a performance resolution required by the Michigan Department of Transportation authorizing the annual application of permit for miscellaneous operations within state highway rights of way, which will include the street closures and banner placements in conjunction with the 2019 special community events use of the state highway right of way. And I believe there's a whole list of them. We've got pages, a couple pages of them. Uh, most of them are great banners. banners. They're repeats of what's been done for years. So, here, a lot of your events. So, are there any comments or questions? Or I guess we'll entertain a motion first. Any motion to support now? Do we have any comments or questions? I would like to add the night to have the fall festival. Very dangerous. The kids running across the street mm -hmm. trick or treating. Cars still going down Superior Street. Uh, I saw a truck last year probably going about 35 miles an hour. Could never have stopped if a kid had been crossing the street. Sounds like a good idea. I think we established we're able to and then and get a hold of them when we give some notice to do this, correct? But, but this is our general, but we are, we do have the possibility to come back prior to that for, for, for to do that at a later time. Because it, it's, it's going to be the same Thursday as yeah. it was this, the last few years. Uh, currently, we close off the north side of Woodward and the south side of Woodward. This, you know, key traffic. That's just our local street. Yes, right. that's this why I just did a, yeah. um, yeah. a motion. Yeah. But Superior is the one that's the problem. Right. right. Mm -hmm. that's but, but I understand that, and yeah. you know, it's one of those. Like I said, everything that we do is about balancing. You know, you know, you, know, you shut off the street for two hours here, two hours there. You know, some people do okay with it, other people don't, uh, from a business standpoint. And, and you know, last year we did try it. I don't know what Larry Nelly and I did talk about it last year. After uh, in October, um, about that, you know, we did bring down a couple. Of, uh, well, one crossing guard did we, Mark? Mm -hmm. from, two. You know, two, two, two down there to, to be at Woodward Street. Um, it's just one of those things we can, you know, if uh, everyone feels more comfortable doing that, um, just need to talk to everybody about and let them know that we'll be closing the street down. That sort of thing. Okay. Um, but the kids are in costumes. They're going back and forth. And I just think it's dangerous. I do think the net is going to grow, too. I've heard a lot of uh, organizations and agencies that are going to get involved in this next year, so I think it's just going to get bigger. Mm -hmm. And I, I was downtown and witnessed the same thing, kids running out in the middle of the street, and it's scary. And it's dark already. It's October, so it's really dark. So. But that's just my opinion, right? Well, um, how about I reach out to <laughs> the folks down there that are, you know, that are open and things like that, talk with them and see what... You know, I've been down this road <laughs> before, so um, I'd rather talk with everybody and say, hey, here's what we're looking at doing for, the, for this year, and, and here's why. Um, it's a feedback that way. So I guess, what is your pleasure, Larry? You're making the... I'd like to see it closed for the two hours. I mean, would you want to add that as an amendment to yeah. this? Uh, I don't know <coughs> yes. So that's, that's your motion, then. I guess it's to amend it. Include that? The increase of the traffic doesn't offset the streets being closed for the businesses. Depends I, I don't know. Okay. Depends on who it is. That's all. Yeah. Okay. It's like when we do the, um, the 127 tour, some people do okay and others mm -hmm. don't. And, and the ones that don't, most of them are, hey, it's it's for two hours. It's I'm not going to do any business for that time period. And it's not for the community. So yeah, some people it, take it out. You know, there's, uh, people have to understand that even, you know, I mean, I help your business directly during that time period. 
but all the more traffic you can bring downtown eventually helps everybody downtown and everybody in town. Well, I, I agree. I'm just saying I, I, yeah. know, I, I know. I preach to the same yeah. crowd, I'm sure. So. Well, Eric, if, you, if we left it the way it was, would you still be able to discuss this with the merchants downtown and could we still make the change? Well, you might as well make the change right now, right now, and just let them know that hey, the commission would like to do this, you know, this way, which is fine. I mean, well, I, yeah, I mean, one kid gets hit by a car, and, and <clears throat> nobody wants to face that. No, I understand. Yeah, can, can I just yeah. ask a quick procedural question? So, please, Larry, Larry is offering this. Right. So, right. so we need do we second it as amended, or we have to read? I believe no, we the initial we amendment has to be so the amendment has to be made by the, the initial motion. Yeah, you approve the amendment first, then you approve the motion. Well, you, yeah, you might or, just would withdraw the original motion. Yeah, or withdraw. Yeah, you can just approve the amendment and then, yeah. and then vote on the amendment. So Roger could say he would accept the current amendment. Yes. Yeah. I'm not I'm trying to interrupt the conversation. It's a commission procedure like this. Whatever makes it happen. <laughs> well, I think, I think this, this preaches to a bigger issue that I think that, that a lot of us have been dealing with here lately. If, if we are looking at ways to grow this community and ways to do things differently, we have to be willing to make some changes of things we've done in the past. And, and these types of things where I know it's an inconvenience to, to shut down portions of downtown for a period of time, I do agree. I think that it, it, it gives us the opportunity for more people to be involved in a safer manner that does that. And I think that the, the more times we can make these decisions based on those things, again, going forward, that we can do things that way, it changes a little bit. And I know exactly what Eric's talking about because there are people who just, they, they just don't see this as something that's very important or something, you're right, one kid, that gets hit, takes all of that away, and we'd always say, oh my gosh, why? But even off of that, I think making some of these types of changes, we have a different downtown. We have things going on in Dunman. There's a lot more foot traffic. So on that night specific, this year, I thought there was so much more foot traffic, and it is spilling over. Um, I, I, I just would like to see the people in the past who've been negative about some of those things really understand the big picture portion of this. And well, that dump truck had no intention to stop it. The shop. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know Eric is, you know, while he's talking to these folks, he encourages them to look for out of the box ways to take advantage of that crowd. You know, bring them into your business for show your wares or show your we had more services. We participate in the Christmas thing this year. Yeah. yeah. Probably the last five. Yeah. Which is a beautiful night. It was nice. I didn't make it, was it down nice. to the kids' night this year, but I've got the past. And it's a cool event. And, you know, that's the college kids stepping forward and doing something for and, the and, and you got the fall fest, yeah, that's, that's yeah. completely the college coming down. We throw a few dollars at it from LA Action, but um, that is all volunteers from the college coming down to help out with all that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know the restaurants were packed that yeah. night. And everybody that I have ever talked to about anything in downtown Alma is impressed with how much more stuff there is going on in downtown Alma. That's one of the big I want to encourage you to continue you to get you safely for everybody. You betcha. Especially children. All right, so did I think I we got that, a, did I make that motion. I mean, <laughs> did I make that motion? <laughs> you you <laughs> did not. I, I understand you approved the amendment. I, yes, I approve the amendment. So, <laughs> uh, Nick, have we satisfied our parliamentarian? I, I'm not your parliamentarian. <laughs> <laughs> Just what, you know, whoever seconded my. Whoever seconded well, my. Whoever seconded 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 my. It's good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we're going. Go. Go. Okay. Anybody else want to confuse anything for yeah. No, I'll wait for something later. <laughs> <laughs> we, we will make one in parliamentarian. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's good at this. So. Okay, so we do have a motion and amendment, or an amendment motion on the table. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. We approved it. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, where are we at? Two, consideration of a resolution to approve the budget amendment request to increase the communication budget line item for fiscal 2019 budget for the Rural Urban Fire Board by $2,000 and to increase the private donations from the Luniac Foundation again. Line item in the 2019, fiscal year 2019 budget for the Rural Urban Fire Department by $2,000. Any 
Your pleasure. This line of water, I think, was skip number two. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. You know that? <laughs> my apologies. Oh, my God. I'm the problem with Terry. I didn't notice. Fired. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. We'll go to number two then. Consideration of a resolution approving the um, City of Alma procurement policy. And that's the document that Matt's been working on. It kind of allows the uh, department heads a little more leeway to go along with all new processes. That holding them accountable for their own budgets. So uh, in line with that, we're giving them more authority to, to act, act on their own and be responsible for things. So I, I think pleasure. Let's oh, get a motion on the table for Zoom for support. Hey, okay, we have a motion support. Matt, you wanna I say we we've looked at this document a number of times. It's probably the third or fourth time that we've had it for you. Um, we tweaked it a couple times really I think the only issue we had was, was really hammering out those those levels um, that would authorize people to be able to make their own. Truly, we had a discussion again on Monday about, uh, because we are a little antsy to get to the point where BSNA is functioning and then we're able to put these in as our own guidelines right within the system. So the good thing is in the system, uh, a lot of the checks and balances, which are the things that SNT is going through audit process, and we're looking through all that. These are, we can take care of a lot of things with just getting this document approved because it will force those checks and balances to go into place right within our systems. So, um, and it just cleans up the old policy a little bit, but then I know that the area most interest in it. And I think, you know, it's, I appreciate that it takes steps to empower, you know, we've got good people on staff, we've got good people running these departments, they know what they're doing, we empower them with little things like this, and we're seeing benefits, you know, in the presentation earlier, what you talked about earlier, the wastewater treatment plant. When people own their positions, they own their projects, you know, amazing things can happen when you let people go and do what they can do, so great news. Any other comments or questions? This allows the consumer bills be paid on time. That's also, part of our other process, yes, that we are <laughs> that we are doing. Uh, those don't have to go through the entire process all the way through now. Now, I will tell you to make sure, as we had that discussion even Monday, the coding and stuff that comes, so even when those don't have to follow that, you will get them from your corporations, I still do see those. Those still do come to me in an email that say they've skipped that part of the process. So they're still they're still able to be viewed. So if somebody uses that code that will bypass that, I still you still get to see it. Yeah, it the system, the system slow, does have the checks system and does have that own checks and balances in it. So it is still visible and it is still seen. So, but it should yes, Larry, it should you answer your question. Yes, we should be able to speed that process up process up. Prevent the late check. It also opens up to uh, pay different ways and to yes. shop differently, and rather than you know get a check cut or or only go to a person that has an account with us, it opens it up for us to to shop much better and save money and but get the bills along paid with quicker. Continuing our local preference policy, correct, which is still encouraging still us to yeah. support our local vendors yeah. and as much as possible. Still a portion of the as much as practical and fair to both the taxpayer and the and some provisions really for good vendors that we're working with and have good good relationships. There's some provisions in there to make sure that we, we maintain those relationships. And those 13 or 14 different things that you can do as criteria for when you do make a decision, those are verbatim <laughs> from our ordinances. Our ordinances right out of the ordinance. Yeah. And the same thing works on those. Okay. That's what happens when you have a new sheriff in town, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, any additional comments or questions? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion's carried. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you for all your work on that. And thanks to staff for, I, I know everybody put yeah. some time in on that, so it's been a big project. One of many big projects. Now we'll move to number three, which is consideration of a resolution to approve the budget amendment request to increase the communications budget line item in the fiscal year 2019 budget for the Rural Urban Fire Board by $2,000 and increase the private donations uh, from the Lineate Foundation in this case, the line item of the fiscal 2019 budget for the Rural Urban Fire Department by $2,000. That's a lot of words. <laughs> and motion support, any comments or questions? Again, our thanks to the Lineate Foundation. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed, same sign. The motion is carried. Thank you very much. Ordinances. Next up, we have consideration of a Approving an ordinance number 806 
to amend the zoning map of the City of Elma as it appears in Section 32-32 of the Ordinances of the City of Elma. This ordinance is to rezone the property at 601 Woodworth and 119 Hastings, City of Elma, Gratiot County, Michigan, from R1 Single Family Residential to OS Office Service Zoning District, subject to the conditions set forth in the Conditional Zoning Agreement. And this is one where it's, uh, we talked about it earlier, <coughs> the, the letter we received from the citizens from uh, Doug McLaughlin. And this wasn't just the letter. No. I mean, this, this, this but staff did the time. research. Yeah. And it appears that this request is out of order. It wasn't made by the proper individual that's authorized to make the request of the, uh, of the city. So right. the, 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 the ordinance that we passed relative to conditional rezoning requires that the application be made by the owner of the land. And that's because the enabling statute, the Michigan statute that allows this, requires that the owner of land make that application. It's an interesting issue because, as I understand it, when we talked about this ordinance, when we were going to enact the ordinance, one of the main reasons that they, that they wanted this in place and throughout the state was you've got a lot of these properties, the, the big box stores that are closed, things like that, properties distressed. Somebody else comes in, they want to buy it, but they want to turn it into something else. So they offered it. They say, okay, we're going to turn it into this. We need a rezone to, to whatever it might be. And these will be the conditions that we'll offer. It seems to me, and Eric and I have talked about this, that most of the time I would imagine that an individual who was thinking about this purchase would want to know if that rezone was going to happen before they bought it. Because, it, you know what I mean, if you don't buy it first and then find out that they deny your request to rezone, then you own the property. So I think, frankly, this is a very unfortunate choice of words by the legislature. And maybe they just didn't think of, you know, think it through. We, so we ran into the same problem. I mean, and so I don't know, but that's not for us to say. Um, and as that letter correctly points out, the state law is the state law. But it says that it has to be made by the owner. What that means is that until they change that, if they do, and maybe they won't, um, those petitions, like the one that was filed for conditional rezoning, are going to have to be made and signed by the actual owner of the property that might be looking to sell it to that individual or entity who's going to make the change, and maybe even by both of them, which can be a hassle depending on the title history and, and whatever, but fortunately, I think in, in this case, it's not going to be as big a deal. But it is correct, and uh, so it, th this, this petition must fail because it doesn't meet the, the uh, you know, the requirements of the ordinance and the state law. So it is essentially a void petition, so we can't act on that petition. So your legal opinion is we take no action? Abs well, I think you or just declare that petition is void, and, I, and, and the next step is for the property owner and maybe the prospective purchaser, if they would like to try again, sign it correctly, send it to the planning commission and start over. It's a shame, yeah. but it is what the law says. So that's the, and it is a new stuff. new uh, process, new regulation, new if it was whether <coughs> intentional on the state's part or if it's a defect in the way they worded things. And we have to live with the, how the state statute is written, and I guess unfortunately. Yeah, and I don't know. I mean, I, you know, look, I'm just assuming, but you know what happens when you do that. But this the the state may have decided for whatever reason they wanted the owner to apply, but in my opinion, that that's that's going to make it takes a lot of the teeth out of this. Because a lot of owners, I think, before they buy it, they're going to want to know. And that yeah. might, that might oh, stymie some of this. It just needs to become part of the purchase process. I mean, that's just contingency. Yeah. Yeah, but that still wouldn't be the owner. Yeah. And they yeah. still wouldn't qualify. But so if, the, if the owner purchases, presumably is meant to motivated to sell, they, they well, should be. Right. Yeah. So, but anyway, it, 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 it adds another, another so, wrinkle uh, to this. And yeah. that's why it's we'll chalk it up to a learning experience for us. Um, do we charge a filing fee? Yeah, when this is filed? Yeah. And do we have a mechanism to rebate that to this person who was filed that incorrectly, or is that too bad for them, or how does that work? <laughs> I don't know of any legal requirement that, that says you can or can't do that. I'm not. I don't know either. I, I don't know. Hope would be as we wait to see what, what they may choose to do going forward. <laughs> So 
you want a motion to disapprove this? Do you think a motion to declare the petition void for, you know, for non-compliance with the, with the ordinance and statute? So the motion to be made, Larry, I thought that's what you said. Your voice changed slightly there, but... I yeah, second. We got legal. <laughs> yeah. We had a motion to support. Are there any additional comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion is carried. Uh, I suppose consideration of, a, the, res, of the introduce, introduction of ordinance number 807 to amend chapter 46, the solid waste as it appears in the ordinances of the city of Elma. And uh, we'll entertain a motion there. It'll be a pleasure. Next thing. So moved. Support. We have motion support. Matt, you want to take the lead on this or is somebody else going to tell us about it? As we went over uh, in the newsletter, this was just a, a discovery really as we looked. Um, uh, doing some work on the marijuana uh, application ordinance that, that this was our, our, our uh, solid waste was outdated. Uh, there were a number of changes that were made in there that we'd like you to go ahead and take a look at under the introduction, and, and including grades and things that were in there. And so uh, everything's been updated to, to more current. That should give us some things including what, what we mean by the amount of waste, different things like that. So that Anybody have questions or comments? Hearing none. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Say aye. Motion is carried. Okay. Agreements. Consideration of a resolution authorizing the execution of a conditional rezoning agreement between the City of Elma and Ivory Manor LLC property owner, which conditionally rezones the property located at 601 Woodworth and 119 Hastings Street from R1 Single Family Residential District to OS Office Services. And again, this is the same property that just got declared as uh, invalid application. I presume we do the same process here where this is being right. Um, but, you know, no the agreement way. itself, you know, the agreement itself, I yeah. guess I'm not saying it's, you know, good idea, bad idea, whatever. We just can't consider it because right. the petition that it was, you know, was premised on is, is, is valid. Mm -hmm. So the, the language of our motion should be what, Mr. Attorney? Well, the language of that. <laughs> to? I, yeah. Well, do we just don't act on it, or do we that's, These are linked. Why yeah. that first yeah, one? No, this actually just doesn't exist. This doesn't, doesn't exist. Yeah, okay. Exactly. exactly. So we take no action on that. <laughs> right. You can't. You can't. Okay. You can't take action on it. Fair that. enough, then. Why did I read it? You don't want to say that the agreement is, in, you know, I mean, yeah. good, bad, whatever. But you just can't take action. I appreciate that. Okay. So we moved on to reports. We have two reports. The commissioners may receive the reports. I have one resolution, or any commissioner may remove any item within <coughs> section for individual discussion and vote. The two reports we have this evening are the Elma Transit Center report for December 2018, and the Elma Building Permits report for December 2018, and the Year End Building rep Report for 2018. So your pleasure. Motion support. Anybody care to pull any items or have any discussion? I didn't realize how many people rode that ride in the city of Elma. Come on out, we'll give you a ride. Pardon? Come on out, we'll give you a ride. All right. That's a lot. That's a water treatment plant. Yes. And that's, a, and that's, that's a, a field trip. That's a slow month for us. It is? It was. Because the schools are off for a while, probably. Correct. It does. Not. It does. Okay. Any more comments or questions? <laughs> It is a good service. We appreciate that. So. Yeah. Thank you. Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We have received the reports. Okay. Um, appropriations. Anybody here to pay? Pay the bills. Pay the bills. Bring your checkbook. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we just. Okay, we have a motion to support. Any comments or questions on the list of items? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay, appropriations are paid. Commissioner comments. Roxanne, let's start us off. Um, welcome. Glad to have you here. And uh, thanks for the support, being vice mayor. My pleasure. <coughs> yeah. Larry? You must throw your face down there. Like <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Mr. Attorney. Uh, <laughs> you maybe need to I'm just glad the sign here is going to hear the Okay. Anything else, Larry? No. Okay. Seven, nine. No. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. 
big things. Indeed. Okay, Audra. I'd just like to say I'm grateful for the opportunity to sit here. So, thank you. Michelle. Thank you for the welcome, and I look forward to four years of exciting things for Alma. We've had a lot of improvement in the last year, and the excitement downtown, and all the community working well together for projects is quite exciting. So I look forward to good times in Alma. <laughs> Mr. Attorney. Well, again, welcome to the new commission members. And uh, yeah, happy new year, everybody. It's going to be a great 2019. You know, where my office is, you guys, anytime. I'm there anytime you need to want to talk. Uh, I think I'm going to take just a second to, to get on a soapbox for a second because it, it kind of dovetails into something we talked about earlier. Uh, we have a lot of things that we've been going through with a lot of different changes in things like that. And I, and I really think it's essential to ask the community, uh, since I got into this position and even prior, I, I've heard a lot of talk about we haven't been, the city hasn't been that forthcoming of wanting to move forward, wanting to change, wanting to do things. There's a reality. Um, in order for us to change and do things, we have to change and do things. I mean, you can't want change without change. And so some of the things I know that we've been going through, especially when you're looking at, at zoning, I, I sure understand, um, but we're running into a lot of not my backyard issues. We need to look at this as a community whole and, and see what the what good some of the things that we're trying to do can do for the community and and trust that we're trying to make the right decisions in, in, in what we're doing. And so as we get into 2019, more changes ahead. And the staff is shaking their head going, please no. But I mean <laughs> community engagement being the next section of really where we need to get going. We're trying to do things to continue to move this community forward, but now we need the community to actually get with us too on some of these things. So, <coughs> so box for that. Thank you. Well said. So I just think you misunderstand when I say I want change. I mean, I want you to change. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Is that not true? <laughs> not me. Okay. Everybody else. I have a question. Do you have to do you have to do it here to appoint me to a planning commission? That is a way that doesn't matter. We do that. Yeah. 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 Generally, when we do appointments, they are by their term limits, but they'll also, if there isn't a term limit, then we do it like in a group. So, like, okay. so if we have somebody, as Matt talked about earlier, somebody for the planning commission, so, you know, like you're, you're going to be offered, you're going to be there. But we, we also probably have to. Well, the, the charter, though, says that the planning commission members, I think, are approved by the mayor and with approval by the commission, the city commission. Yeah. So I think that, yeah, yeah. that's how that should go. But that, like Don Ayers would have to, because he's he was actually the city commission there. Right. right. There. Yeah. Now he's going to be just like a member at large. Right. So we're going to have to reappoint him as a member at large. Correct. Right. Right. Michelle will fill his seat on that. Correct. Yeah. Right. So that's not a thing that that's just. Well, it is. No, it is. 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 there a reason you can't do that tonight? Yeah, I mean, I don't know that there is a reason we can't do that tonight. I mean, I don't know that it has to be an agenda item. Um, it has not been passed. What's that? We've done one of them. I know that wasn't an agenda item. Yeah, I, mean, I, think it, I think you could do it tonight or you could wait till the next meeting, I guess. Is there a planning commission? Anything between the two? Maybe we could even find that other seat too during this section. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you apply or then I'll make a motion to <laughs> agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Because last night we had to, I had to sit away from the pain right. commission. Right. So I didn't want it to happen in another month. Yeah. But but certainly the intention is to appoint months. Michelle to fill yeah. that yeah. seat. This so, 20, right. Right. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Careful what you wish for, but I guess in this case you know what you're stepping into. Yeah. So what about we part of the Yeah, we can do the same thing for Don. I was planning on getting him back there. So it'd be great to have him back in. And then that still leaves us the ability to add another person if we find 
are more people in there interested in still another vacancy in that? Or at least one. We do have a vacancy, so we'll, we'll put out some information around to make sure that we can get some folks if they're so interested. I would point that if you make a motion to it. So moved. Aye. Motion support. Any comments, questions? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Opposed, oh, same sign. Okay, got that done. Anybody else before I make my comments? I just would like to welcome our two new commissioners. <coughs> oh, thank you. We're glad to have you aboard. Look forward to serving with you. And it be fun to your talents, you know, they will bring up different little, little different vision to everything, and that's great. So if you like diversity on the board, the more we can get the better. Lots of opinions are better. Help us all make better decisions. So um, with that, I think just a happy new year. And we'll open it up to public comments. If anybody would like to address the commission, please go to the podium, state your name and address, and share your thoughts with us. Or you want to be first? I know many a times I've struggled through chemo, a lot of struggles that I wanted to give out, but with all the prayers and all the supports that I had from the Elmo PD, my church family, my friend Terry, I'm proud to say that I have accomplished from May until today. I have accomplished this, and I've done a great deal of pulling through and standing here to coach everybody. I have done a great deal. I wanted to get it, but I've had my brothers and sisters to help me, and I did a great job. This is what I done, and this is what I accomplished today, and this is what I received from the Cancer Society here in Illinois. Thank you. Congratulations, Lori. Thank you. Chuck Murphy, 823 Pine in Alma. I uh, just wanted to introduce myself to anybody that doesn't know me. I'm the incoming uh, county commissioner for uh, District 1, which is Alma Precinct 2 plus uh, Pine River and Seville Township. And uh, I've uh, been appointed to the Mid Michigan Health Department. I'll be serving Greater Grassic Board and the uh, Northern Michigan County Association. And uh, if anybody wants to uh, contact me, along with my cell phone number is 989. Sure. 620-0122 and uh, also I want to compliment uh, your uh, uh, whichever city crew it is uh, we had a water bank right in front of my house you have some wonderful employees that did an outstanding job and I really like that super sucker <laughs> vacuum that's on a, on wheels truck that you have it does an awesome job thank you well, thank you and we're also very proud of all of our city departments. And we feel like we do a lot of great work, so most of it unnoticed. So yeah. we appreciate you taking note of that. And welcome to the county commission. We appreciate you representing at least part of our citizens. So, and uh, good luck with the health department. You yeah. Some <laughs> nice issues there. Um, if you want my opinions, I'm more than happy to share them with you later. But <laughs> you may know them already. So, anybody else care to address the commission? Hearing none, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So I have to okay. start you, I'm sorry. So move, okay. Right. Support. All in favor? Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Have a good evening. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>